So my name is Caroline Clay, um, and I'll be presenting on behalf of the Agricultural Applications Capstone Team, which is building an experimental aquaponics system. Uh, the team is made up of myself and my teammate, Jamie Riley, and we have been advised by Drs. Henry Gates and Gibson. So aquaponics is a very quickly growing industry in the United States. And one of the examples of this can be found right here in the Shenandoah Valley, um, just a little over 10 miles away from JMU's campus. There's a farm in Singer's Glen, Virginia, that has been experimenting with aquaponics. And we've had the chance to work with them for the last couple of years. Uh, so before we get into it, um, what is aquaponics? Aquaponics is a combination of hydroponics, which is growing plants without soil, and aquaculture, which is raising fish. So it creates this really sustainable closed loop system where the fish are providing nutrient rich water to the plant and the plants serve as a filter to clean the water for the fish. So when we got connected to Woods Edge Farm in the fall of 2018, they had a system that they had recently stopped using because every year that they ran it, um, they were producing less lettuce and lettuce that had worse health and worse quality than the season before, but they weren't really sure why this was happening. So when we came in, we took a look at the system they had gathered information um, and tried to answer the question for them, why isn't this working? So the conclusion that we came to was that there was a buildup in solids in the system, which happens if you're not properly filtering the water. So you can see in the picture on the left, that blue barrel is a homemade um, settling tank that the farmer there had made to help mitigate this problem, but it just wasn't enough. So in aquaponics, there's two main mechanisms you can use to filter the water and remove solids. The first is a settling tank, which um, we just saw they had tried to use, but it, it didn't quite work. Um, but that's what we spent most of our junior year on, was looking at settling tanks, trying to design a new one for them. Ultimately, what we found is that there are no benchmarks for systems of this size. It's sort of in between an industrial system and like a backyard system. It's in the middle and there just wasn't anything um, out there for that, which was a good opportunity. Um, but with a team of just two people, um, it wasn't really going anywhere. So this year we decided to make a pivot and look at using media as a filter, which is easier to implement. You can test a few types at once and it can address a few problems in the system. So it can address the removal of solids, it can regulate pH in the system, um, it can do a lot of things um, and potentially provide a lot of benefits to the farmer using the system. So there are a lot of medias on the market that can be used in aquaponics, but there really isn't a consensus on which is the best one. Um, just because there's so many factors that go into it, you can see here just a few examples of many that are on the market that people have tried, um, but there really isn't one that conclusively um, sort of hits all of the targets that you want it to. So to start, we decided to look at three medias. The first is expanded clay pellets, which are one of the best on the market in a lot of ways, um, but they can be um, prohibitively expensive for a lot of farmers of this size. We also wanted to look at expanded slate, which is what was previously used at Woods Edge, so we could get a better sense of how their system was working when it was running. And then in our system, we also wanted to put some glass marbles in there just as a benchmark to see what would happen to the system um, if you use a non-porous media. And that was something that Dr. Morton had suggested to us um, just to use as a control and get some better information about what's going on. So we also wanted to test 
two flow patterns in the system. So on the left, um, you can see a continuous flow pattern, which is basically just moving water through the system slow and steady continuously. And on the right shows you a flood and drain flow pattern, which is where you drain a lot of water out of the fish tank at once, sort of flood the grow bed, and then let it slowly drain back out. Um, and these are both widely used in aquaponics. And again, there's really not a lot of information on which one is better. Um, so by testing the different medias with both of these flow patterns, we should be able to get some information on what combination is the best overall. So how this would work is we have a lab sized system that would be stocked with fish and plants, and it would be set up to run in NGO once for 30 days with the continuous flow pattern and then once for 30 days with a flood and drain pattern. And 30 days would be enough time for the lettuce in the system to grow to its mature size. And so you would have each section of the grow bed with a different media. Um, and then each system run would have a different flow pattern being tested. So here is some of our physical um, I guess prototypes of the system. Construction was almost done when we had to leave campus. Um, and so that's what it was going to look like. You can get an idea of the scale of the system. The grow bed is about by three feet um, wide. And so once the system was set up and running with the fish and the plants in it, Every day, it would be water would be sampled from each section of the grow bed to measure pH and dissolved oxygen, which are both um, important indicators of fish and plant health in the system. Um, water would also be tested to see total solids in it to see which media was removing the most solids from circulation in the system. And then we would also be looking at the flow rate of the water. Um, which would be an indicator of whether things are being clogged and too many solids are building up in the system, um, which plays into maintenance and whether or not a farmer would have to get in there and clean it while lettuce was still growing in it. So ideally it wouldn't need maintenance um, for at least 30 days, which would give the lettuce time to grow and be harvested before any uh, maintenance on the system needed to be done. So this is just some sample data. We didn't have a chance to actually run the system this year, unfortunately. Um, but this gives you an idea of every day water would be tested for the 30 days. Um, you would do that for continuous flow and flood and drain. And then all of this data would be analyzed to look at across the board for all of those parameters for looking at which combination of media and flow types uh, has the best results for the system overall. So our final deliverables for this semester changed a little bit in light of the pandemic. Um, so we are currently working on putting together a comprehensive experimental plan that would include everything someone else would need to pick up where we left off. Um, Cause we did a lot of the heavy lift, lifting of this project, but really didn't get to do the fun stuff of actually um, testing it and running it and seeing how it did. So this would include our research protocol. We worked really hard this semester with the IACUC committee, which oversees research using animals at JMU to get a protocol written and approved by them. Um, we'll also be passing along our bill of materials, including, you know, where can you buy tilapia and get them shipped to you in Harrisonburg, Virginia? Um, and then also some final construction plans um, for someone else to put the finishing touches on the system um, that we didn't get to do. So with that, I can take any questions that people have.